Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good, good, morning. Have, good to have you here. Pastor Mac is, uh, I think, starting his way back from Africa. So this morning, we've asked Pastor Zick to join us um, in our Bible study this morning. So we look forward and we're happy to have him with us. Today, we look at uh, the third Sunday in Lent. And we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh, God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading is from Exodus chapter 17. And the nation of Israel uh, has come out of Egypt and all the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of the Lord and camped at Rephidim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore, the people quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water and the people grumbled against Moses and said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, what shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massah and Meribah because of the quarreling of the people of Israel and because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, the fifth chapter. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel is from St. John chapter 4, verses 5 through 26. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, 
If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty forever. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have done, what you have said, is true. The woman said to her, The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will teach us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I tell a little bit of an incredible American story. The year was 1932. Neither of us were born, right? Yeah, no. Nope. The Depression. Um, things were going pretty bad in our country, and then the Dust Bowl had settled in around the um, what some call the Midwest or the Plain States, and there was a little community um, in uh, in Wall, South Dakota, uh, which was having a difficulty even uh, staying open and sustaining their business. So Ted and Judy Husted decided to try something. And they began putting up signs on the highway that said five miles till a free drink of <laughs> cool water. And, and then they spread the signs out. And, you know, as uh, Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story. Today, there are over a million visitors a year to Wall Drug Store because mm. of that mm -hmm. simple sign, a free drink of cold water. The woman that came to the well that day... Um, was obviously thirsty, um, more than just a, a, a physical thirst, but there was a spiritual thirst there. There was something that was going on in her life that she was unsettled about. Jesus, of course, who knows all things, um, mm -hmm. tells her what the problem is. She not only had uh, five husbands, but the husband that she had, she was living with, and, and she had all of this baggage, and, and here this, this Jewish what she thought prophet showed up at this place uh, for a drink of water. And Jesus kind of turns the whole thing on its, on its head, and he addresses this woman. So, uh, Pastor Zick, maybe to throw a question out to you, what kind of, uh, what do you glean from this text with what Jesus is, is trying to teach this woman and trying to teach us? Okay, I, I looked, when I was looking at this ahead of time, I did look at the context a little bit, and uh, part of the beginning of this section that wasn't included in yeah. our reading today um, says he's there with John the Baptist, baptizing with the other disciples, and then he hears that um, the people in Jerusalem, who are kind of antagonistic, are uh, have heard that he's gaining more popularity than John. Okay, and then the text says it was necessary for Jesus to go through Samaria back to Galilee. Well, it takes about three days to get from where he was or Jerusalem to Galilee. Uh, and the most direct route is through Samaria. Samaria. Yeah. Most of the time, uh, if they had time, the Jews in the north in Galilee would 
go across the Jordan, go down the other side of the river, and then go over to Jerusalem, up from Jericho, yeah. or whatever. Uh, it really wasn't necessary for Jesus to move that quickly. So when it says it is necessary, it's already a hint that he's got a different motivation. He has yeah. a different need uh, to go. And we see Jesus really being in control of this whole situation. He comes, he sits down right by this well, the well of Jacob, and he sends the disciples into the village away from him so that he's alone. Um, and then this woman comes and uh, unexpectedly to her, he asks her, you know, mm -hmm. to give him a drink, uh, which was not customary at all. And then so she's talking to him. And then when she gets to the point, um, well, he, he, she gets to the point where about the um, being a prophet. Mm -hmm. uh, then she asks him a theological question. Right. And he says, well, um, well, she says, should we worship here in right. Mount Gerizim or should we worship in the temple in Jerusalem? And Jesus says, uh, the days are coming and now is, it's here when the true worshipers aren't going to worry about the place or the how or the language, but they are going to worship God in spirit uh, and in truth. And then she said, well, you know, I perceive, you know, you're a prophet. And then he, he says, and she asks for this living water that Jesus had promised. And then he asks, out of the blue, he asks about, well, go bring your husband before yeah. I answer that question. <laughs> so he's in charge again, but it's sending her back. And she goes back, and then she brings, eventually, that's not in the text either, right. the later part of the gospel, she brings the people from her village saying, could this possibly be the Messiah, the Savior of the world? So Jesus is in control of this whole situation, and this is um, designed to reach out to the Gentiles, the non-Jewish people, uh, which is a major theme throughout uh, this gospel as well. I think it's interesting that that Jesus never did get a drink of water that day. <laughs> right? It, uh, seemingly not. Seemingly you know. not. Um, he, he really wasn't asking for a drink of water. He, uh, he had much more in mind. He was really thirsting for much more. He was thirsting for this woman's this woman's faith, this woman's salvation. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that it happens at the sixth hour. It is at the sixth hour that Jesus cries out from the cross, mm -hmm. I thirst. Oh, yes, right. Mm -hmm. And he thirsted for, for, for our salvation. And he, he dug something even greater than a well. He dug really his own grave, so to speak, right? Mm -hmm. And descended into death and, descended into death and, and, and conquered sin, death, and, and the devil, and rose again triumphantly. And before he's before he's buried, from his side flows blood and water. And, water. Mm -hmm. and that blood and water now flows through every baptismal font and through every chalice so that um, really the whole world can now come to him for that, that cool uh, drink of living water. It uh, kind of beckons back to that wall, uh, wall drug there, that um, how this gospel spreads. And I, I think maybe you're the evangelism guy here at, mm -hmm. at, at Trinity is that this shows us that Jesus goes out and seeks that one person. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes we forget that in our own vocations, how um, that one person in our life that we can share this living water with um, it, it has great impact. Mm -hmm. The amazing thing is in, in this gospel, um, John the Baptist, especially in the first part, is very prominent. And he's saying, hey, you know, a greater one's coming after me. Yeah. He's the one who'll be baptizing you, not just with water, but with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, and then right after that, then he points to Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Then um, he points him out uh, to uh, Andrew, and Andrew goes finds his brother mm -hmm. Peter. Yeah. Uh, Philip goes finds Nathaniel yeah. and brings him. 
Uh, then John the Baptist is referred to again, uh, just before this in the text. And so, um, again, he's saying, the one coming after me mm -hmm. is the one who will baptize you with the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. He's the one that's greater than I, the one we're waiting for. And um, then Jesus goes to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Jesus, uh, and then this woman um, goes and tells the people in her village, hey, could this possibly be the Messiah? And they come with her. And they say at the end uh, of a longer text that um, now we know for ourselves, having heard him, that um, this indeed is the savior of the world. And in between there was water too, where Jesus is talking to Nicodemus last week's gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, he says, except a man be born of water and the spirit, spirit he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So you were referring to the blood and water coming mm -hmm. out of Jesus' side, uh, which is, can be related to uh, the sacrament of the altar, mm -hmm. but uh, there's also the baptism sure. there. To the baptism of Jesus brings the Holy Spirit. And the woman starts, uh, Jesus asks her for water. Mm -hmm. And the next thing we know, she's saying, Lord, give me this water. Right. She's asking right. for the drink. Doesn't fully understand yet, yeah. but then he reveals it. Yeah. And they come to faith and he stays there several days with those people, yeah. informing them and teaching them that basically as this, this one, as, as this text ends, uh, Jesus said, I who speak to you am he. Mm -hmm. Maybe a better translation of that is, I am the name for God. He is the one speaking to you. Yeah. So God has come to his people in Jesus uh, with the spirit, with the truth, uh, to seek and to save the lost. And it all goes back. It becomes effective when Jesus dies on the cross. Um, uh, that is where uh, salvation is won for us. Yeah, what a wonderful Lenten text, again, showing us God's wondrous love for us. And, and Paul reminds us again how God shows his love for us in this manner. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus doesn't leave this woman at the well. He, he brings to her the life-giving water. Uh, we have a number of, of wonderful hymns for Sunday. I thought we would look at um, uh, the last hymn, I think our, our closing hymn for Sunday, is uh, What Wondrous Love Is This? And um, why don't we sing um, verses 1 through 3, okay? Yeah. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to bear the dreadful curse for my soul, for my soul? To bear the dreadful curse for my soul. When I was sinking down, sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, sinking down, when I was sinking down, beneath God's righteous crown, Christ laid aside his crown for my soul, for my soul. Christ laid aside his crown for my soul. To God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. To God and to the Lamb I will sing. To God and to the Lamb who is the great I am? While millions join the theme, I will sing, I will sing. While millions join the theme, I will sing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Zach. You're welcome. Joy to have you here today. Happy to be here today. Thank you.